Great. Um, we have made it to chapter 15, Kinetics of a Particle, Impulse, and Momentum. Um, in, in this lecture 15, we're going to talk about principle of linear impulse and momentum. We're going to divide this um, the, the section in two parts. In the first part, we're going to talk about what is linear impulse and momentum. In the second part, we're going to kind of derive the, the, the principle. So um, some example or application, if for, for example, you see the golf player. So he hit the golf ball with the, um, with the stick. Um, so he uh, transferred the force onto the golf ball that caused the golf ball to fly. And um, over time, he loses the force that was given to him. And he, he finally drops. So though it was a short period of time, but during that time, some force was exerted on the golf um, uh, golf ball and um, that time the force during that time period is called the imp impulse and then the uh, mass and velocity multiplication is called the momentum so we're gonna see this kind of scenario uh, where we analyze about the how much force it was given to the uh, golf ball and then um, what was the initial and final velocity those kind of scenario we can apply the principle of uh, linear impulse and momentum so um, today's learning objective is define um, impulse and momentum uh, some examples is also in soccer uh, the the football player hits the ball with his leg and there's impulse uh, for maybe a sh very short period of time and he applies the force on that time and the ball flies um, another example could be um, the, the football player he's also done the same thing using his leg to transfer the force the, uh, he applies over a sh short period of time that is impulse and um, the ball gets a momentum he gets his mass and the velocity he has his mass and he gains some velocity so um, if you multiply both of them there's momentum um, and another example is the ping pong ball you also apply the force from your bat to the ping pong ball so it goes to the next court and it, it comes back so um, let's start with um, um, what is um, impulse and momentum so before so impulse uh, P -U -L -S -E and momentum um, so before we do that we have to do um, some, to get the towards the definition we have to start with the Newton's second law of motion that you know f equals to summation of force equals to mass into acceleration and acceleration can also uh, then be written as change of velocity over change of time so dv over dt now if we want to take um, integration of this so it becomes if we take the dt on the other side um, so it becomes summation of f dt equals to m dv so now we can take integration on both sides um, so if 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 um, um, so, well, let's talk about the limit first. So it could be any time from t1 to t2, or any times t1 equals to zero, it's starting from zero to any time t. So we're taking any time from t1 to t2, and we'll have the velocity. Uh, the initial velocity at t1 is v1, and final velocity at time t2 is v2. If we think that, so it will be our integration. Um, so if we do the integration, um, there is um, if 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 our um, if f is uh, this force, right? This force, if it's a function of time, then it's easy to take the uh, integration with respect to time dt, the small amount of time dt, or if uh, or it could be f could be a constant. And then we can uh, take the f out and just do integration on dt. Um, so this equation here, um, it can be further written as 
um, summation of all the integration from t1 to t2 assuming f is a function of time so we keep it f dt on the other side uh, what we have here is a mass mass is always constant so we can take it out um, there is no velocity term here it's just dv so if we take integration we'll get v and um, uh, so it will have only v from v2 to v1 so what will give us again summation of t2 to t1 f dt which will give us um, m v2 minus m v1 so this equation here this um, equation here that we have it is called uh, the principle of linear um, impulse and momentum so um, principle um, pull of linear impulse and momentum so this is our principle of linear impulse and uh, momentum uh, it, it provides the mean uh, meaning is um, um, to get the final velocity uh, after the impulse so for example um, if we know how much force is applied over um, time if we know the force uh, as a function of time or a constant from uh, applied to any particle from time t1 to t2 and we know the initial velocity uh, of the particle which could be at rest in that case v1 is zero and um, or we know the initial velocity we can find the final velocity v2 from this equation this is uh, uh, one example of, of um, using the you know, using this principle of linear impulse and momentum so let's move to next slide um, we need to find some definition uh, from this equation so again let's start with the equation that we have we had um, t2 t1 f dt as you mean f is a function of time um, m v2 minus m v1 so uh, first definition is linear momentum so we know what is moment uh, what is momentum? Momentum is the multiplication of mass and its velocity. So when you multiply the mass with with its velocity, um, um, it is called the momentum. So linear momentum, uh, we can define this this uh, linear momentum as L capital L. If we assume that, so. Um, this mv2 it could be l2 and mv1 could be l1 and these mv are defined as linear momentum um, um, so it, here m is the is scalar um, and then the, um, the velocity has a direction um, so um, so um, for linear momentum to term uh, for this term linear if the momentum um, uh, is the same direction um, as the velocity uh, then it is called uh, so for example if the particle has a velocity in this direction so the momentum along the same direction so for example velocity was v uh, 2 final velocity in this direction right so the if uh, if the momentum we take in the in the same direction so m v2 on the same direction the velocity would be the linear uh, momentum and uh, the unit for this is um, mass for, for mass we can get kilogram and velocity is meter per second so the unit is kilogram meter per second so this is our linear momentum um, next one is a uh, linear impulse
So for the linear impulse, um, the other part that we had here on the equation, if we put that as a equals to i, which where i is the summation of force into time, this is called uh, the linear impulse. Um, this is called a uh, linear impulse. Uh, P U linear impulse. Um, so so the linear impulse is the that the force you are applying on a particle on a body for a certain amount of time. So th that is the um, linear impulse. Uh, since force has a direction, so linear impulse is also a vector. Um, so it's 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 a vector. It's it's not a um, scalar. Uh, so what it means is that the impulse acts as the same direction as the force. Of course, because time is uh, doesn't have a direction. Time is a scalar. So if I have um, particle here and if um, if I f apply a force in this direction so for um, a certain amount of time t or del t so the direction of the impulse would be the same direction of the force and it will be summation of that force and um, um that 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 time um okay if we use delta t then it will be um just um, f delta t that will be the impulse here um so um the unit uh unit of this from here we can derive as um f as a newton and a second for time so it will be newton second that will be the unit um, um, so if we um, now next if we assume the force is not a function but constant so the equation is simplified we can take the force out of the equation uh, from t2 to t1 we'll have only dt which will give us um, uh, f um, t2 minus t1 um, so if we graphically see both scenario when f is a function force is a function of time so the graphical representation would be um, t1 t2 and we will have um, this uh, will have force on this direction and time on this direction. So this area under the curve here and this this um, this curve here, the red line that I'm covering, is the force as a function of uh, uh, as a function of time. And this area under the curve. Um, the total area under the curve is my um, impulse, which can be um, obtained from taking the integration of function of time dt, t1 to t2. Now see the second scenario where, where f is constant. So what if the force is constant? So what will be the scenario? Um, again, we draw the coordinate system where this is um, force in y axis and time is in this axis since the force is constant we will have only a constant force constant force for uh, for the time here let me use a different color time here t1 to t2 we will have a rectangle um, 
rectangle um, cross-sectional area. So this area is the impulse now, um, which is is I equals to F um, T2 minus T1. So this will be the impulse for a constant force. So now we have uh, defined um, um, the linear impulse and uh, linear momentum. Uh, in the part B, we're going to start with the principle of linear impulse and momentum. Um, um, so, see you in the next part of the video. Thank you.